and we don't have to put it all out, but let's put enough out to This summer, for the first time in recent memory, there was a farmer's market in Spring Lake, North Carolina. We do thank you for giving Sister Jenkins a dream. The weekly event is the brainchild of Annie McRae Jenkins. She retired in 2001 at age 60 and returned to the Sand Hills area, a sprawling region about an hour south of Raleigh, Durham, a land steeped in rich, sometimes painful history. On this spot in 1789 in the Sand Hills' largest city, Fayetteville, North Carolina ratified the U.S. Constitution. But this also was a market where slaves were bought and sold. Ten miles away is the Army's Fort Bragg. Tucked inside is another would-be landmark. This is what is left of the foundation. A few rocks from the fireplace are about all that is left of the 650-acre McRae family homestead, built by her great-grandfather. He was in a pioneering group of freed slaves who bought and farmed land here after the Civil War. This was Jenkins' childhood home. We grew everything. We had the um, fruits, the vegetable gardens. We had lots of hogs. We had cows, goats, chicken. That all changed suddenly in 1954 when her father died of lupus at age 35. Amy was 13. Soon after, her mother and six younger siblings were harassed by racist hate groups and evicted from this land, which eventually became part of the Army base. We didn't leave because we wanted to. It was through intimidation. Uh, my mother didn't know that people were working behind the scenes to take the land. So we lost all of that. And, and you because, paid it all for that? Oh, no. No, we were not paid. Just completely sent Just away. completely lost. It was like a bad memory. Amongst all of the good memories that we had living here, that was a bad memory. She went to Durham Technical College and was a computer programmer and businesswoman in Raleigh, where she married and had two children. She never wanted to come back to these childhood haunts, thinking it would bring back painful memories but she did so in the late 70s to fulfill one of her ailing mother's final wishes. She wanted to see the old home place before she died. We wanted her to see it, but she was so sick at the time that she couldn't come. Coming down that road, that fear was still there. And it was like, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go. But I wanted to do it for Mama, because Mama had told me to say, if you just go look around, if there's old jar lid or anything that reminds you of the old home place, or if there's still any grapes or pears around, bring me something from the old home place. And I wanted to do that for her. We came down that road and started up the little road that leads to the house, and a miracle happened. That miracle was that it brought back fond memories and a rediscovery of her ties to the land. Her own family story similar to many African Americans who moved willingly or unwillingly to cities and urban lifestyles. We didn't have land. We left from being self-sufficient to where do we go from here? We have nothing uh, to the point of accepting handouts and that type of thing. So I know what it is to own land, which is one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about land ownership especially if your whole culture and everything about your life is tied to that land. So it was just like it, we had lost everything. In 2001, a retired Amy McRae Jenkins founded the Sand Hills Family Heritage Association, a back-to-the-land movement for African Americans. It provides workshops on estate planning and how to avoid modern-day versions of the fraud and intimidation that dispossessed her family. We are in an emergency phase right now trying to hold on to our land because we are losing land now at a rate of 70% of African-American farms as compared to the 18% in the white community. She says many who have left the area inherit land here, which they are tempted to sell to developers in this fast-growing region. Jenkins tries to coax them to hang on to land or to sell to a relative who might farm it. Ed and Sheila Spence are a poster couple. They returned to their native Sand Hills area after long military and teaching careers in San Diego, California. My 
grandparents were sharecroppers. We literally lived off the farm. You know, all our meats come from the farm. The hogs, the cows, uh, all the vegetables came to the farm. But they never owned any of the land. And so this was special for us to be able to, to do the same thing that we did when I was a child, but now we own the land. Last year we cut it down because we didn't realize that they produced grapes. The Spencers bought 10 acres in 2001, on which they grow various fruits, vegetables, herbs, and raise goats. Jenkins' program linked them with available extension services to reacquaint them with land management practices that sustained their ancestors. They lived off the land. Uh, their medicine came from the land. Their food came from the land. We've shared that with our grandchildren. With the Sand Hills, we had a, a youth program. My granddaughter and I participated in that program, and um, it was very enlightening to her. Without her being out in the field, in the heat of the day, picking peas, she would have never been able to realize what it was like for our ancestors to be working on sharecroppers' farms or, or be enslaved, to have to do that. This is Mr. Wright, our Black Farmer of the Year. All right. so Annie Jenkins says the next step is to help people go beyond just owning farmland, but to making a living. The farmer's market is one way. I'm not talking about living in the past, but I'm talking about recognizing those things that we had that are of value and building on those assets. Her ultimate goal is to recognize and preserve those things in a museum. Jenkins is negotiating with the Army to put it on the homestead her family began here in 1882.